Good day folks, I ain't fucking Australian. Now the last video, it was somewhat easy for me because I knew most people viewing it would agree. However, on this occasion, it feels a little more like... What's this? You don't want it! But here we are, so let's just get on with it. Here's the Younger Dry's impact hypothesis and why I don't agree with it. I've got a feeling most of us know about this theory. A large object, probably a comet, strikes the North American continent or explodes above it. The heat of the explosion melts the ice. Vast amounts of debris thrown up into the air, causing a nuclear winter. While smaller debris rains down, causing wildfires around the Earth. Now this seems like your quintessential impact event. However, funnily enough, to explain my issues with this theory, I want to look at the other famous impact event, the KT event, otherwise known as the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. Of course! 66 million years ago, an asteroid about the size of Mount Everest. Why do they always use Mount Everest? I've never seen the damn thing. Anyway, this six mile wide object smashed into the shallow sea in the area of the Yucatan region of Mexico. It incinerated everything within a thousand miles of the impact zone, sent history's largest tsunamis charging up rivers and coastlines of North America, and threw up millions of tons of debris into the air. Some of this debris later rained down in flames, setting alight the surface of the earth, with lighter materials staying up high in the atmosphere, blocking out the sun's light and heat for months. It possibly took a thousand years or more for the Earth to fully recover. Now we know all this thanks to the evidence that was left behind, in the form of the KT boundary layer. This is a geological layer of material consisting of terrestrial dust and debris from the impact zone, as well as obviously materials from the object itself, along with charcoal, soot, and of course iridium, which is considered the primary footprint of any impact event. All this material is found at near equal levels, in a layer that circles the entire globe and is at an almost identical thickness no matter where you look. The only difference content wise is in shot quartz, which increases in mass the closer to the impact site you get. Well we now have something to compare the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis to. So, what evidence do we have for this impact? Less than you might think, actually. So far, we don't seem to have a crater. We also don't seem to have any debris from the event. So therefore, we've got to go simply on the impact layer that's been left behind. Unfortunately, there isn't one. The Younger Dryas Black Mat layer is actually nothing more than a mat of organic material. These layers are created all the time. The only reason it stands out for the Younger Dryas event is because we seem to have a sudden surge of them. Which does show us that there was some sort of environmental shift at the time. However, this is not an impact layer. There is no debris from an extraterrestrial object, nor is there any debris from an impact site. And most of the materials that are used as evidence of this impact can actually be produced in nature on the Earth's surface. It doesn't require some sort of big world-changing event. Now, could it be that the fragments have simply been lost to the ice and snow of Greenland? Yes, it's very possible. So let's look at the rest of the evidence. Probably the two most standout pieces of evidence for the collision are the nano diamonds and the Iridium. Now whether this was actually an impact event or an event such as Tunguska where the object exploded in mid-air, the Iridium would still be spread almost like an aerosol. It would climb up into the upper atmosphere, spread out and then gently drop over time. Which is why with the KT layer, we get that unified amount all the way around the world. This isn't what we see with the samples of Iridium. There are many sites used as proof of the Younger Dryas impact, and Iridium has been measured at all these sites. What is peculiar is that at some sites, 
The iridium is very abundant, yet at other sites the amount of iridium can be low to non-existent. And funnily enough, we actually have the very same thing happening with the nano diamonds. Sometimes they are rather abundant, other times they are barely noticeable. In fact, what makes it even stranger is that in one site you could have a fair amount of iridium and next to no nano diamonds, and in the next site you have virtually no iridium and a lot of nano diamonds. This does not speak of a all encompassing single event. Even the map layers themselves seem to go against the whole idea of a single event. There is no Younger Dryas boundary layer. The map layers used as evidence for the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis are actually discovered at different levels within the geology. And each one of these layers are almost unique, not just in thickness, but also in the compounds within them. So, am I saying that there was no extraterrestrial impact? Not at all. The nano diamonds and the iridium still needs to be explained. And the best way to explain that is with an impact event. I just don't believe that there was a single event which impacted the earth or exploded above its crust and then caused a dramatic worldwide change. My interpretation of the data? I'd say that it looks like there was some sort of meteor shower, but not the sort that would have caused a global change. I would personally suggest that what may have happened was almost like a, a shower of small rocks. And I mean small, I don't mean like the 747 that struck in Arizona. I mean really, really small. On the larger size, maybe the size of a small car, going right down to a football, a politician's level of honesty, just really small golf ball. Now that's not to say that such an event would have been without tragedy. Well, for many people, all they'd have seen was a distant shooting star. For the unfortunate few, it would have been more like... Aw, oh, shit. Now I know many of you will not agree with my conclusions, and that's okay, we're all here just doing the same thing. I don't do videos to convert others, I just want to present my views, that is it. If the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis works for you, brilliant. So what do I believe began the Younger Dryas event? Well you'll find that out in the next video. Right folks, we finally made it to the end of this video. And it took long enough. I've actually spent four days just editing. Due to my daughter getting ill and hospitalised, the dog deciding to get ill, my car deciding to get ill, this computer deciding to get ill. It's been something of a struggle. Oh, and I apologise for any background noise. I happen to have three kittens along with the usual two cats and a dog. And my daughters don't want to get rid of them. But hopefully from now on with everything fixed, nothing else will go wrong and my next video should be out relatively soon. Oh for the love of...